That, you know the word, the value added tax. The U.S. doesn't have one, but could creating one be the answer to our deficit problem, or will it be another case of the government burning your money? Elizabeth McDonald, worth every penny we pay her, is at a Brooklyn bakery to explain this one. Hi, Lizzie. Hi, Cheryl. Yeah, we're at Financier Patisserie in the headquarters in Brooklyn, and we're here for a reason. We want to show you how complicated a value-added tax would be if it was instated in state, in here in the United States. We know that the vice president has already said that the president is talking possibly about a value, saying possibly on the table. Treasury Secretary is saying, wait a second, it's not. But Nancy Pelosi says we may see a VAT. That deficit commission, Erskine Bowles, says there may be a VAT. Former Fed chair, Paul Volcker, supports a VAT. But this is how complex it can get, uh, uh, Cheryl. In Britain, a value-added tax would not be assessed. The strawberry would not have a value-added tax in Britain. In France, you'd see up to a 6% value-added tax on the strawberry alone. But watch what happens when you take it to chocolate. And Cheryl, you're going to love this. 6% if it's a dark chocolate. 6% value-added tax, dark chocolate. If it's milk chocolate, over 19% in a value-added tax. If it's white chocolate, white chocolate, also over 19% in a value-added tax, Cheryl. So that's why this micro form of taxation, where it taxes little things, has this mm -hmm. macro enforcement of a tax cop over in Europe. And, you know, that means that the IRS would possibly get bigger here. And we know that the VAT did not fix the fiscal incontinence and the fiscal recklessness of Europe, the pig nations, Portugal, Italy, uh, and Spain. Yeah, maybe it's better for you. That's the issue. Wheat thins, for example, in Britain are not taxed with a value-added tax, but potato chips are. So, you know, the issue is, again, who is going to enforce this very detailed, complicated system? It would be the IRS. We'd be spending a lot of taxpayer money to make a bigger bureaucratic system in the form of a bigger tax collector, meaning the IRS. All on the table, a 5% value-added tax in the United States here could raise possibly $300 billion from taxpayers across the country. The owner of this bakery shop is saying that would hurt jobs and that would hurt economic growth. Back to you, Cheryl. You know, Todd, you know, a VAT tax is not an out-of-this-world idea. It's been floated around, and some say, oh, that'll never happen in this country. They only do that in Europe. But the truth is, it's a very possible uh, tax that we could be facing in this country. On top of higher income taxes, on top of prior property taxes that are increasing. I mean, where does it end? I mean, when you're talking about a VAT tax, you also have to take into account all the other taxes that are out there. I mean, we are just getting taxed to death right now. Mm -hmm. and, and what I really want to know is what's the VAT on that strawberry shortcake behind Liz right now? Because I bet you that thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, that's a great point because these are luxury goods, so they'd be taxed at 19% or more in France, 20% in, uh, in Britain. But if it was just the bread alone, they would face a lower tax rate. That's why the tax cop would have such a heck of a time, you know, trying to enforce it. Enforce it. And it's not tax reform. You're right. It get layered on top. And it's so complex, you know, how this thing would be enforced, Cheryl. And back to you guys. It's really a complicated system. It really is. Well, it's not complicated to know. Dark chocolate, everybody, is better for you. Go for the 70% higher. It's much more nutritionally uh, strong and gets that right. sweet craving out of your way in the afternoon. <laughs>